how good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down from the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion. From there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forever. you faithful raise the strain of triumphant gladness god has brought forth israel into joy from sadness loosed from pharaoh's bitter yoke jacob's sons and daughters and them with a noise in foot through the Red Sea waters. Tis the spring of souls today, Christ has burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death as a sun has risen all the winter of our sins long and dark is flying from the light to whom we give blood and praise undying now the queen of seasons bright with the day of splendor, with the royal feast of feasts, comes its joy to render, comes to glad Jerusalem, who with true affection welcomes in unwearied strain. Jesus Resurrection. Neither could the gates of death nor the tomb's dark portal, nor the watchers, nor the seal, hold you as a mortal. But to Day among your road, you appear bestowing your deep peace, which evermore passes human knowing. Alleluia! Now we cry to our Lord. Who triumphant burst the bars of the tomb's dark portal? Alleluia with the Son, God the Father praising. Alleluia yet again to the Spirit raising. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. celebrating our unity 
but we confess the many ways that we are divided. Our nationality, ethnic origin, economic status, gender, age, and musical preferences are all too often obscure the common calling we share in Christ's name. May our common identity as your children and our communal witness to Christ bind us together in your name. Forgive our tendency towards separation and division and remind us that we are your Easter people. When we walk in the light of Christ, we have fellowship with one another. When we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. For in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has showered mercy upon the entire world. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Acts chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel reading for today is taken from St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There are many concepts that we as Christians talk about. Mercy, forgiveness, grace, servanthood, stewardship, community, lament, celebration, justification. And another one that we often hear about, whether it is in a sermon or a devotional reading, or in our hymnody, or just in our encounter with Scripture, is the Kingdom of God. It shows up in the Lord's Prayer, which we pray every week. Jesus himself references it an amazing 126 times. 126 times. It is obviously very important to Jesus, as with the rest of the writers of the New Testament, who outside of the Gospels reference the Kingdom of God an additional 34 times. Yet what does this statement even mean? What is the kingdom of God? The other concepts we get, forgiveness is a tough thing to do, but we understand it. Mercy is similar. God's grace shocks us, but we know what it is about, even if we wrestle with accepting such an amazing gift. The rest are similar, difficult to execute or to accept, but we know the general template of what we are talking about. But with the kingdom of God, we are often left asking the question, what is it? What is the kingdom of God? As Christians, we have tried to answer that question for the last 2,000 years, and unfortunately with often disastrous results. The Crusades were an attempt to win back the Holy Land, the place that is often associated with the center of God's kingdom here on earth. Only generations of bloodshed resulted, and a lasted an enmity between three faith groups that claim Jerusalem as integral to their faith narrative, and that an enmity still exists today. Or there are the horrendous residential schools that populated Canada, that the church sponsored by the state tried to bring the indigenous people of this land to Christ, and the result was broken families, lost cultural heritage, abused and traumatized children, and death. One can argue about the veracity of the mass graves found a couple of years ago, but the lasting legacy of that horrible time in the church's history is an ugly one. And it was done in the name of bringing people to Jesus and advancing the cause of the kingdom of God. There are so many other examples of when we as Christians 
trying to bring forth the kingdom of God at the point of a sword. Of course, these endeavors were as far off the mark as possible. How any Christian ever thought that violence, whether physical or verbal, was ever going to advance the kingdom is truly mind-blowing. The kingdom of God is not a violent kingdom of violence or a tyranny. It is something very different, something that moves past us if we aren't willing to let go of our conceptions and prejudices. It is when we begin to recognize it moving in our midst now, apart from any specific effort on our part. It is moving with the power and the direction of the Spirit, and we find ourselves caught up in it, rather than directing it or inspiring it ourselves. So what does it look like? If it is not violence or some kind of forced tyranny to a specific version of Christianity, what is it? Listen again to our reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership on any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This was a community that formed up around the disciples, a community that proclaimed the gospel, but also lived the gospel. No one hoarded anything. Instead, the community was one that shared everything in common. No one was needy. They cared for each other, just as they had learned that Christ cared for them. They were living out their faith. They were, through the power of the Spirit and the strength of the gospel message, living into the kingdom of God. And there we have it. We ask the question of what the kingdom of God looks like, while well, it doesn't look like great kingdoms or empires, it doesn't look like giant megachurches, it doesn't look like a tyranny driven by the theology and ideology of the few or the one, it is not armies marching to crush their enemy, it is a group of believers coming together to worship, to eat together, to form community together, and to look out for each other. The kingdom of God was found in those ancient communities of Christians who stood together and stood up for one another. They made sure no one had to do without. They made sure no one was left cold or hungry or alone. They saw one another as siblings, claimed by the same heavenly parent and bound together by the love of that parent. That was what was most important. That was what their faith drove them to do. We still have moments of that inbreaking. When we gather for a meal together, and we laugh, and we pray, and we support each other. Maybe that is in a Shrove Tuesday meal, or in a conversation over coffee with a friend. Maybe it is when food is given to a family in need who is grieving the loss of a loved one. These are all ways that we know the kingdom of God is in our midst. Do we do any of these things for glory, or to advance our own agenda and theology? No, we are moved to do these things out of love. And when we do that, we can see what the kingdom of God is all about. Recently, as many, as many of you know, the hub ceased its daytime operations. In fact, their final meal together was on the same day we celebrated Monday Thursday, when Jesus sat with his disciples and they had their last meal together. As someone who's done some volunteering with that group, I know how much these services will be missed. But it will be missed for more reasons than just the physical needs that were being met for the clients of the Hub. It would be missed because it gave those clients a community and a sense of worth. It gave the community of Leduc a chance to be neighbors to those in need. It gave us all a glimpse of what the Kingdom of God was like wherein people from all walks of life could come together to find love, acceptance, food, and hope. Now I want to make one thing perfectly clear, at least from my perspective. I don't feel that there were any villains in the situation involving the hub. 
just various groups of people trying to do what they thought was best. But with that being said, the need for us as a community to find a way for the hub or something like it to rise again is of, of utmost importance. You want to know what the kingdom of God is? It is the community and hope and support that we can offer each other. It is about living Christ's love and finding a way forward where no one has to go without. It is about taking the example of the beloved community found in our reading from Acts and finding a way to live it out. This is not just a passing notion or a good way to illustrate the kingdom of God. Something like the hub is a living, breathing moment where the kingdom of God is active and where the love of the gospel is on display. And in a world like the one we live in, where we silo ourselves off from one another more and more, and where we would rather be angry with each other than loving, we need to find a way to live as a people of God more intentionally so our light can shine and so the darkness does not win. Thus, if someone ever asks you what the kingdom of God looks like in our modern day and age, tell them that it looks like two friends having coffee at McDonald's, where one friend is pouring out their hurt and sorrow to the other and the other is holding them in love. Tell them it looks like eight people seated around a table, eight people of different generations and households who may or may not know each other very well, and yet they are laughing and eating pancakes and simply enjoying their siblings in Christ with no agenda and nothing on their mind but the joy of the moment. Or tell them it looks like a group of individuals who are often ignored or spurned by the wider community around them, coming to a place in which they feel safe and held. It is a place that feeds them and cares for them and gives them a worth that often they have never felt. Word is here as we pray and sing and experience God together, a God who continues to inspire us to live our lives as disciples of Christ. These are the moments which show us what the kingdom of God is all about. May we never take those moments for granted. Rather, that our hearts be open to the workings of the Spirit, so that it may guide us into communion with each other, with each other and into the beloved community of God, just as the disciples once did. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus has risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and other all-growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, remembering all those now we name either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, in this season of Easter where we celebrate the resurrection, may we always look to see signs of that hope which comes from the risen Christ. May that hope fill us with peace and the strength to continue even when things are difficult. May we trust that in you nothing good is truly lost, but that it will rise again in your time and serve its function as you so will. Help us to hold on to the hope that in you, And in your love, we are held always. Thank you for that blessed assurance. And may we know too, that because of it, we are forever your children, and that not even death can take take us away from you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all those whose lives have been given in faithfulness to the gospel. Grant us your grace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. God and community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Receive the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Eastern hope bless you now and forever. Amen. A few announcements. Eternities for today are, are in, so in are placed in the mail slots. I assume that some are probably mailed out, so look for those if you haven't already received them. The Duke Music Festival starts next week and runs through various dates in April. National Volunteer Week is April 14th to 20th. We'll be doing something in service for that on the 14th in order to celebrate everybody who makes our church life possible, which when we really look at it is everybody. So it is an opportunity to celebrate the ministries of everybody here and all the contrib contributions that they make. Our area gathering is on April 27th, that which will be po hosted here at Peace Lutheran Church. Uh, we will be uh, joined, joining, I should say, both the East Central and the Northern areas uh, and have an opportunity for collaborative partnership conversations and um, conversations surrounding basically the future of the church and where we're going uh, together. The bishop will have a time of sharing, other ministries will have an opportunity to share, there'll be time of worship, so on and so forth. So there will be a lot of opportunity for uh, good conversation and reflection and, and, and learning. So if anybody has interest in that, you can register on the uh, website, the Alberta Synod website. Uh, finally, we have some birthdays and an anniversary this coming week. So Sarah Chorzempa, Brian Zutz, and Jocelyn Webman will celebrate birthdays this week. And Gilbert and Lorette Magnin celebrate an anniversary this week. So let us say a word of prayer for all of them. God of grace and mercy, we give you thanks. And for Sarah and Brian and Jocelyn, all of whom celebrate birthdays this week. Bless them as they celebrate, O oh Lord, and help them to know that they are loved, both by you and by their families and their communities and their friends. They are valued for the people they are, and we give thanks for all the ways in which they share your love in the things they do and say and the ways they live. Bless them in the year ahead, O oh Lord, and may they always know your love as they journey. We also pray for Gilbert and Lorette, who celebrate a wedding anniversary this coming week. We give you thanks for the love that they have shared these many years, and for the life they have built together. Continue to support them in their love for one another, and in their love for their family and for their community. 
And may you grant them many years ahead of, of happy relationship and an opportunity to continue to grow together in love and in relationship. Bless them, O Lord, and give them a good year ahead. So for these things we pray in Jesus' name. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's all for my announcements for this week. I hope that you have a good week ahead, and we will talk to you soon, I hope, and we'll definitely see you next week. Bye for now. Go in peace, share your bread. Thanks be to God. <laughs>